acceptable unto you this day and forevermore. Amen. Have you ever wanted to just belong? Sure. I, I think that's pretty typical. You know, I remember at the end of my freshman year in college, I went off, I, I was going to work at two United Methodist camps that summer, and then head back to college, and, and I had decided I needed a new set of friends. I needed a place to belong. Now, many of the people that I hung out with in my freshman year in college, they were fine, don't get that wrong, but there were a few. There were a few I needed to lose. It's a long story and at times very painful, um, but I was needing a new place to belong. And so, Adrian wasn't that big, it was about 900 students, and so I thought, I'm going to try and join a story. Now, before you think of any stereotypical sorority of a big college yet, that's not Adrian. If you rushed or if you went through the, the rushing process, um, you were pretty much guaranteed a place in one of the three sororities. Um, it was pretty rare that they turned anybody away. So, at the end of rush, I remember being in my dorm room and, and being told it would be like at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning, the bid would be slid under my door, all in secrecy. Sure enough, I was basically waiting for it. Picked it up, and sure enough, it said Alpha Sigma Alpha. And I had a new place to belong. And it didn't take long to find that fresh start that I needed. And I'm pretty sure if you look back in your life, there are times that you've wanted to have that place to belong. Maybe it was a family because your family life wasn't uh, real strong or real healthy. I know, um, at least in my life, I know a couple of different people who married their spouses really for no reason other than to be in their family doesn't usually work long term, but it does happen. Um, or maybe you wanted to fit in at work, but involving to fit in at work may have caused you to have to check those ethics. Or in your neighborhood. We want to belong. Sometimes we get to jump right in. In some ways, the day I accepted that bid is I ran from Cargo Hall to Herrick, and all of my new sisters were out in front, and, and they threw a new t-shirt over my head. I was in. I belonged right away. And there are other times where it takes a long time. <coughs> and sometimes we want to climb over this, the, the fence, don't we? We want to figure out how to climb over a fence and sneak in. This morning we find ourselves in these famous I am statements. And these two, the gate and the shepherd, they're really combined into one story. Here's what you need to know about the background. If you've read John, he uses these I am statements multiple times, but in the, in the chapter immediately before is one big story. The ch ninth chapter of John starts off with Jesus healing a blind man. And what happens next is a discussion. You know, that's the polite way of saying an argument ensues. Yeah. Now the disciples ask a simple question. Who sinned, this man, or the, his parents, that he was born blind? We need to remember that all disease or bad um, things that happened to you in the time of Jesus were thought to be caused by our sin. We know better now, and Jesus helps us understand that. 
Jesus responds, Neither. And the disciples are a little dumbfounded. But they're not the problem. It's the neighbors and the Jewish leaders. When they hear about what Jesus says, a discussion ensues. See, especially the Jewish leaders, they want to place blame. Somebody has to be made, have blame in order for this man to have been born blind. And he keeps trying to help them understand. And it is in that discussion that leads us into this 10th chapter. Into this image of gate and shepherd. For you see, in, in the scriptures just today, when we hear about a shepherd, one of the things that we think of is the pastor. In, in those days of the day, day, it was those Jewish leaders. They were called shepherds sometimes. Not like the shepherd that went out in the field, but a shepherd who led. So they know exactly what Jesus is getting to. And we start with this image of I am the gate. Even before he gets to shepherd. Start with the gate. When we think of sheep, shepherds, gates to pastures, we think an idyllic picture, don't we? Cute, bleeding sheep. And a lush, large pasture. Yeah, well, that isn't the image of the day. Because that's not the image of sheep in the first century. First of all, you need to know that sheep are gullible. They will blindly follow. So at night, a shepherd would, if they were near a city and they were wealthy enough, they would have a pen in 